The first lesson this morning comes from the epistles, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 to 13. The Corinthians sought proof that Christ was speaking through Paul as an apostle. Paul instructs them to examine themselves instead. Are they truly in the faith? Paul writes, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but that so you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority, the authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. <clears throat> Our second lesson comes from the Christian scriptures, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Jesus calls his disciples to practice the ministry of hospitality, welcoming ordinary people every day in his name. Here are the words from the New Revised Version, updated edition of the Bible. Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Will you please pray with me? O oh God, come to us in the quietness of this very moment. Center our hearts and our minds on you and you alone. Open us to the power and to the presence of your Holy Spirit and remind us that your love, grace, and mercy come to us unasked for and free. Amen. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, says Jesus. What makes us feel welcome, comfortable, and appreciated in any environment? Oh, churches worldwide boast about being welcoming, but how do we do that here at the Federated Church of Orleans? Are we being welcoming? Oh, I suppose you could say that a sense of welcome is in the eyes of the receiver. We may do our best at presenting ourselves and displaying acts of welcome, but are our acts received that way? Now, a welcome goes beyond mere words. A sincere welcome reaches out positively and draws people in. Now, in the ancient world, identity was tied to family and community. It was understood that in showing hospitality, one welcomed not just the individual, 
but implicitly the community who sent the person and all that they represent. Therefore, welcoming a disciple of Jesus would have meant receiving the very presence of Jesus himself and the one who sent him, God. So compassionate welcome means approaching each other through God. In the Hebrew scriptures, God instructs Israel in no uncertain terms to show hospitality to strangers. In Deuteronomy, we read, you shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Hospitality was not uh, an option. It's a mitzvah. It's a commandment, a matter of justice. So today's gospel reading continues the story of Jesus sending out disciples to do the works that they had seen him do. So to proclaim the nearness of God's realm, to to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Uh, He sent them uh, with only the essentials, no money, no bags, no, no change of clothes. So they were totally dependent upon hospitality. This biblical message about hospitality seems so far away from our currently remarkably inhospitable world today, marred by hatred and incidences of violence directed against the marginalized. Now, Mike Brink and I met with Am Hayam's leadership team on Thursday. Many of us have been concerned for our Jewish friends about the trend and normalization of anti-Semitic events along with other expressions of hatred in recent years. We met to discuss how the Federated Church of Orleans might best offer support and encouragement to Am Hayam in these trying times. I told Am Hayam's leadership team that for us, actions speak louder than thoughts and prayers, Actions speak louder than simply saying words denouncing hate. I told them that in the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, we took these words seriously. Bonhoeffer wrote, only those who cry out for the Jews have the right to sing Gregorian chant. So I told Am Hayam that the Federated Church wants to draw our Jewish friends in, offering more than a cup of water, rather wanting to embrace them, offering safety, security, and a welcoming home where they are not a guest. Federated is their home as well. Our congregation's relationship with Am Hayam began in the late 1990s. And they said that we, that we have done a great job of making them feel welcome in, in this place, more than just a, a nice little hospitality spot, that they felt a, a true sense of, of being, belonging in this space that we share and call holy. But in our divisive world where hate is not confined to a a single marginalized group? Are we, as a congregation, embracing Jesus' call of welcome? In the United Church of Christ, we claim an extravagant hospitality at being at the heart of our vision for the church. And we commit to embody that virtue, that, that spiritual practice, the best that we can. Now, our congregation has taken the steps of becoming an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, writing a statement that says in part, all people, including but not limited to age, race, culture, socioeconomic position, 
gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, family structure, faith perspective, gifts and abilities are welcomed and blessed and invited to receive the healing and transforming love of God. Could we pass the Apostle Paul's test of our open and affirming congregation? Have we been welcoming to everyone? A rainbow banner has been prominently displayed on the front of the building this past week. We have done this for several years during the month of June, which marks Pride Month around the U.S. and some parts of the world. It's a season to celebrate lives and experiences of the LGBTQ plus communities. Now, for some, they think that this is being political. I've mentioned previously that many in the LGBTQ plus community, including myself, have been hurt by the church, all in the name of righteousness, falling far short of Jesus' words of welcome. So therefore, our efforts at welcome need be extravagant because many come through our doors hesitantly, never assuming that a rainbow flag automatically translates into a sense of welcome, safety, and affirmation. We are living in contentious times, in a political climate in which some states have sought to ban drag shows, ban books, addressing sexuality and gender, and prohibiting gender-affirming health care. We have seen acts of hate and outright acts of violence directed against many that are included in our open and affirming statement. So for those who have ever felt marginalized, pushed aside, injured, or hated, Simply because of who you are, I say God loves you. In an earlier message on Jesus' baptism, you might recall that I highlighted the text where Jesus, is, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and immediately following as he came out of the waters, the heavens being torn apart and the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice coming from heaven. And, In that message, we had used Eugene Peterson's words in the message um, that puts it this way. You are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. And I said that all of us, all of us are God's beloved children. That we are chosen and marked by God's love and the pride of God's life. In these contentious times, we cannot forget Jesus' call for welcome. All of us, all of us, are chosen and marked by God's love and the pride of God's life. No matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, those words are for you. Beloved children of God, just as God created us, all of us, no divisions, no separate separation. These words of welcome and love should not be confined to the month of June for pride only. Rather, Jesus calls us to bring these words of love into action at all times. Barbara Brown Taylor reminds us that we are not consumers, but providers of God's love. We are not supposed to seek a place of safety and reassurance in the church. It is not a, what she calls a hideout, 
not the place where those of us who know the secret password can gather to celebrate our good fortune. And we are not simply chosen people who have been given more good gifts than one can open at one setting. Instead, Taylor says, the Holy Spirit comes knocking at our door, disturbing our members only meeting and reminding us it's time to share. Sent by God, Jesus sends his disciples to participate in his mission proclaiming in word and deed the good news that God's kingdom is drawing near. In the Gospel of Matthew, the writer states that the church is a sent church, a missionary church. There is simply no other way to be church. What would happen if we stopped expecting people to come on their own initiative through our church doors and instead took seriously our calling to bring the gospel to them? What would happen if we genuinely believed that we bear the presence of Christ with every person, in every encounter, in every home, in every store, every neighborhood, everywhere we go. What would happen if we saw every conversation as an opportunity to speak words of grace, every interaction an opportunity to embody Christ's love for our neighbor? Imagine the church might look like every cup of water given in Jesus' name. May we feel a rainbow welcome in the words of the Apostle Paul. Encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and <clears throat> greet one another with a holy kiss. Amen.